So um, thank you for joining us today to learn more about our upcoming Alumni Global Adventures trip to the Southwest National Parks. After being canceled in 2020 and 2021, our trip is finally scheduled for May 11th to the 19th, 2022. My name is Laura Wills and I'm the Associate Director of Alumni Relations. I just wanna mention I am recording this webinar for a few folks who are unable to join us at this time, but they would like to watch it later. So if everyone um, could mute yourselves for now, but if you have questions, feel free to ask throughout the webinar. You can either um, unmute yourself and ask a question, raise your hand or use the raise your hand functionality, or if you'd like to chat it, I'll see that come through and then I can ask that question as we go through. So today I know some of you are actually already signed up for this trip, which I'm so excited about, um, and others are here to learn more about it. We do have some spaces still left. So today we'll go through the itinerary of Dickinson's trip and answer any questions you may have. Uh, for those who are going on the trip, please know that we will have another, at least another one webinar, if not two. As we get closer, we can meet each other, um, talk about, um, Susan's gonna have some suggested readings for us that we can um, read going into that, into the trip. Um, any last minute updates or packing suggestions or things like that. So um, joining me today uh, is, um, we have Vanessa Cheatham from Orbridge, the company running our trip, and our faculty host, Susan Rose, class of 77 and a parent of a 2013 graduate. Um, Susan has been here at Dickinson since 1984. And some of her recent work focuses on um, indigenous studies. So she is why I accompany us on this trip. So she'll add a great educational component to this travel experience. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Vanessa. Thanks so much, Laura. I, uh, I really appreciate you inviting me to be here and I'm so glad to be talking about what we all love, travel. Uh, finally, it feels long awaited and I'm just delighted to talk about it with all of you. Um, I hope we can keep this informal. I will tell you a bit about the trip, but as, as uh, Laura mentioned, please pipe up and tell me, uh, you know, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to uh, use that functionality on your screen. Um, thank you for putting this together, Laura, and thank you, Susan, for joining us. I am going to just share my screen. Uh, here we go. Uh, is, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are you seeing? Okay, terrific. So um, we've been partnering with Dickinson for the last several years to execute this exciting adventure to the Southwest National Parks. Uh, I'm gonna tell you just a little about our company, a little about educational travel and why you might wanna travel with Dickinson. I'm gonna talk a little about uh, COVID protocol on the ground and then I'm gonna dive into the itinerary and tell you more about exactly where we're going and what we're gonna be doing on this exciting program. So we've, uh, as I mentioned, we've been partnering with Dickinson for several years now and um, we're excited to finally get this off the ground. Uh, Orbridge, is based out of Seattle, Washington on Bainbridge Island. We're a small business of approximately 30 to 40 employees, all of whom are as passionate about travel as I am. We work exclusively in the educational travel market with other colleges and universities like Dickinson and some zoos, museums, and continuing educational groups. And our programs are intentionally crafted and curated for these types of small group experiences that you're not able to access by Expedia or other online venues. Uh, we intend to immerse you in a place. I also will um, cover it later, but since I have the bullet there, I do wanna mention guest safety is our primary concern. And to that end, we do have safety protocol that's implemented on the ground according to CDC recommendations and state and local law. And I'll tell you just a little more about that uh, shortly. 
Our most important guiding principle at Orbridge is that our programs are beloved by guests. For us, that simply means that we focus on destinations that offer life-changing experiences that we hope you, our guests, will never forget. So we do this by utilizing customized accommodations, like some of the lodges that you all will stay in on the Southwest Parks trip. They're certainly iconic. Uh, we also um, work with small family-owned villas and we charter small ships all in an effort to create a very unique type of program that you can't access elsewhere. We will be creating uh, customized excursions exclusive just to the Dickinson group. And we do it in order to provide a depth of understanding of a particular place, people group or history of an area. We also very much pride ourselves at Orbridge on offering a deluxe product for a value price. Some of the services that we hope you will enjoy while you're working with Orbridge include a guest service team that specializes in your program of choice. So the team that you'll work with uh, that's based in Bainbridge, they've seen what you're going to see, they've experienced what you're going to experience, and they will speak specifically to your destination. They're really experts in your destination. We have an air team that's ready to assist you on any flight itinerary questions or needs you might have. We offer a custom curated expedition library. And so if you register by the early booking date, we mail you this library and it includes maps, uh, field guides, it might have a coffee table book, a relevant novel, all sorts of things in there that we hope enhance the educational aspects of the program. Uh, our travel directors and expedition leaders, they get very high praise. And I think, you know, it's one of the highest, most highly reviewed uh, aspects of our programs from our guests. Um, we find the most knowledgeable and dedicated tour directors. In an example, on the Southwest National Parks, we primarily use retired parks rangers, and they're able to offer you know, special insight into the parks that you might not gain otherwise. They're so familiar with the parks in a way that really is, is um, incomparable, to be honest. And so it's on everyone's mind. Uh, what does travel look like in this um, post-COVID time? And really, for us, we... Um, our safety protocol that is implemented is specific to that particular destination that you're visiting. And we adhere to all local law. And so it really does vary based on where you're visiting. Um, generally speaking though, on tour, we, um, we do have groups that are rather small in size as opposed to very large groups. Uh, on the motor coaches, we abide by all um, transportation security administration guidelines. They're under the auspices, the motor coaches are under the auspices of the TSA. So we abide by all of their guidelines. You'll find in many cases that local guides are wearing face coverings, your expedition leaders. They have been so far on our tours this year, they have been wearing face coverings. Um, and so I just wanna mention, you know, we understand that it's an ever-changing landscape so we have created, in response to that, we've created a wellness website where you can go. It's orbridge.com backslash wellness. You can go to our wellness website and you can dig in and really learn more about your particular destination and exactly what protocol is being implemented there. I also have to mention that uh, that's again, as I, as I said earlier, ever changing. And so that wellness website is always updated. And if there's a change in local protocol, let's say uh, an area required masks, and now they don't require masks, we would update that there. And so uh, we just ask our guests, and it's, we've been incredibly successful so far with our guests, and at least the reviews say so, um, in you know, a high level of satisfaction, I believe it's because we've asked our guests to remain flexible. Uh, and so as we get new updates, we're sharing them and guests have been really willing to work with us on abiding by the protocol that is in place locally and nationally um, 
for, for our programs. And uh, any questions on that so far? I'd be glad to, to chat about any of those things specifically or generally, if anyone has anything they, they um, is on their mind. No? I put the um, link that you just mentioned and asked into the chat if anyone wants to copy that. Thank you so much, Laura. I have a question. Absolutely. Uh, I, I did look at the wellness and it said that the protocols were in effect at least through March. Um, I'm wondering if there would ever be a change about uh, the requirement of vaccination. And I also wonder, are there any loopholes in the requirement for vaccination such that often places say, well, vaccinations are required, but you know, not if you are a person who uh, is exempt from vaccinations? Thank you so much. That's a terrific question. Yes, we have just this past week, we've decided that we will be extending the vaccination requirement through the end of 2022. So your trip will fall under that situation. Um, and I'm so glad you mentioned that the wellness website will be updated likely by Monday with that new information. Uh, it was literally just decided. So um, I'm really glad you mentioned that. We, at this point in time, are not making exemptions. Uh, certainly you can reach out to me if you feel like there should be, um, and I will take it to our operations team. But at this point, we have not made and are not planning to make exemptions to the vaccination requirement. We do ask that everyone be vaccinated. I have both doses of the shot at minimum 14, having completed the second dose 14 days prior to arrival to the program. Okay, thank you. That's, that's the side that I would uh, be on, which is no exemptions. Thank well, you. Well, great. I'm glad that you feel reassured by that. And that's our, that is our, our current policy for sure. So you all see that updated on the wellness site really soon in a couple of days, and maybe even uh, by the end of this week. And any other questions before I jump into some of the um, details about the Southwest? Okay, terrific. Moving right along. This trip has always been a huge hit with Orbridge travelers and we have welcomed hundreds of guests on our National Parks Adventures. This is one of my favorite programs that we offer because I feel like it blends such a beautiful, uh, a uh, diverse array of natural and cultural history of this particular area. The program covers the national parks within the states of Arizona and Utah. And if you're choosing to take the pre-tour, you'll have the opportunity to visit Colorado as well. Uh, driving time on this um, program, you'll be spending time on a luxury motor coach. It's very, very nice. Um, screens, lots of, of seating room. You can stretch your legs, plug outlets. It's a very nice motor coach, but driving time is not extensive. And most days we'll spend about an hour and a half on the coach. There are a few days where it's a bit longer whenever we're uh, traveling, for example, from uh, Phoenix or Scottsdale really up to the Grand Canyon, a few other days. But for the most part, we we do try to limit that time you're spending on the motor coach. And on the days whenever the, the time on the motor coach is a little longer, we do allow for plenty of time for comfort stops and your time on the coach is broken up by a number of excursions as well. So you can see on this little map here, we're flying into Phoenix and the program actually starts in, starts in Scottsdale, but we're flying into Phoenix and then your departure gateway is Las Vegas. So on your arrival day, as I mentioned, we begin in Scottsdale, Arizona, where you'll get acquainted with your fellow Dickinson travelers at a special excursion to the Heard Museum. And I'm gonna let uh, Dr. Rose talk more about this excursion because she is our exciting expert that's gonna join us on for this part of the pro well she'll join us for the whole program but she is going to lead this part of the program yes so i'm really excited um, about this so some of the directors of the herd museum participated 
in our Carlisle Indian School Teachers Institute a couple of years ago. Uh, so my colleagues, Jim Gerenser, who is the college archivist, uh, and I have developed the Carlisle Indian School Digital Resource Center, which has scanned all of the material really related to the school and to students uh, so that it's easily accessible, particularly to people who came from virtually every nation, native nation from around the country. So we've had teachers uh, institutes as well as a number of visits to native communities across the country that have been funded both by Mellon grants and archival grants. And so Janet Kentley had participated in that teachers institute and when she went back, they were updating the herd museum uh, exhibit away from home. And they initially started this a number of years ago and thought it would be a short term program, three years perhaps. And it ended up being their most um, visited exhibit of any time. And so they have now extended it and they have updated it. So a lot of the material from the Carlisle Indian School materials that we have are actually part of that exhibit. Um, so we will be able to actually visit that exhibit. Um, we'll decide a little bit later whether a documentary film that a student and I have um, produced on two students who were sent to the Carlisle Indian School, whether we actually preview that at the Heard Museum or whether we may want to do that in another location along the trip. But we're really excited about this, a very interesting exhibit. Um, and as already mentioned, Laura had mentioned that I'll be providing a number of readings, which I can talk more about later. Um, they'll certainly be recommended, <laughs> they're not required. Um, and I'm also really interested um, in any suggestions that you all might have in terms of what we might want to be reading. So this will involve both fiction and nonfiction. Back to you, Vanessa. Terrific, thank you. So uh, after we visit the Heard Museum with Dr. Rose, uh, that sounds so exciting. And I, I really am crossing my fingers, maybe I can join, at least for the beginning of the program. I'd love to experience that. Um, we uh, will meet, um, we'll meet your fellow travelers and we'll gather for a welcome reception in the evening and we'll settle into our hotel which is the Scottsdale Marriott at the McDowell Mountains. Uh, I think you'll find all of these properties truly exceptional. They're uh, iconic in some respects. They have absolutely beautiful, breathtaking, in some cases, views. Um, and, uh, and we're really excited about you experiencing them. In the morning, uh, we'll depart Scottsdale for the Grand Canyon. On sorry, on day two in the morning, we'll depart. We'll depart Scottsdale for the Grand Canyon, and we'll enjoy some anecdotal stories and information from our tour directors. Uh, we'll have at least two tour directors if it's a large group and one if it's a small group. As we make our way to the canyon, we'll make a comfort stop in Sedona along the way. This is one of those days whenever it's a little longer on the coach. So we do have that comfort stop where you can stretch your legs and you'll have some time there. And we arrive at Grand Canyon around lunchtime. And you're free to choose at that time from a variety of local establishments for lunch before we begin our Grand Canyon National Park sightseeing and guided rim walk. Um, so you will get to spend time on the rim of the canyon with the guide. You also that evening, because we stay at uh, Moswick Lodge, which is actually just uh, a short walk away from the rim of the canyon, you're able to return for sunset if you'd like, which is such, uh, just such a nice treat. Um, the Maswick Lodge is nestled in the Ponderosa Pine Forest. And so we will, whenever we check in in the late afternoon prior to dinner, you'll have time to explore the property and the grounds, which are just beautiful before you join for your actually your first group dinner because the night prior we're having a welcome reception. So it would be your first group dinner together, getting to know each other on day two. Moving right along, uh, we continue to explore Grand Canyon National Park which happens to be one of the seven natural wonders of the world on day three. And uh, there's an optional helicopter, ex uh, helicopter tour excursion in the morning. We're gonna send you more information about that in your guest documents. Uh, 
And then throughout the day, there will be hiking opportunities and exploration of the park with your guide before lunching at Cameron's Trading Post. Cameron's Trading Post happens to be one of the largest Native American trading posts, and it provides quite a bit of historical experience, some Native American art, uh, dining, gifts, it's just a unique experience that we think everyone should see whenever they're in the Southwest. Once we eat lunch at Cameron's Trading Post, we'll depart for Golding's Lodge as we, as we head north on our itinerary toward Utah. We arrive to Golding's mid-afternoon to relax and really enjoy the spectacular views of the Monument Valley. Goldings is a popular spot for Old West movies. And so people really love to explore this lodge. Uh, they actually have a museum right on site. It's called Goldings Trading Post Museum. And they have quite a bit of um, artwork, artifacts and film memorabilia from all of the Westerns that have been shot there. Uh, it's a fun, it's just a fun experience to see. That evening, we enjoy a traditional Navajo cookout and musical entertainment for the remainder of the evening. On day four, we will depart for Monument Valley Navajo Tribal Park, and we spend all morning uh, touring the tribal park. The park is also actually a frequent filming location for Western movies, uh, and we'll spend time, there's a 17 mile drive looping throughout the park. Uh, so we'll spend a lot of time exploring that morning along the ride and uh, enjoying every aspect of, of the tribal park that they have to offer. We'll return to Goldings for lunch on day four and then we depart for Lake Powell, which is always a highlight for our guests. Guests really love Lake Powell. I think it just feels very relaxing there and it's a beautiful resort property there, but they love it. Um, so it's located in Page, Arizona and it has really lovely Lakeview rooms with sort of a, a Native American flair to them. From your room, you actually can view uh, Waweep Bay, the Lone Rock and Castle Rock. Um, so really spectacular views from there. Uh, dinner will be on day four included at the award-winning restaurant at the Lake Powell Resort. I'm gonna show you some photos in a few minutes of uh, the resorts at which we'll be staying too. On day five, after enjoying breakfast, the Glen Canyon float trip is on the agenda. And this is a really enjoyable morning spent on the water. So we spend all morning together on the water and then it's followed actually by picnic lunch on shore. And it's definitely a highlight for guests. After the float trip, guests are free to enjoy Lake Powell, enjoy the resort services, the spa services at the, at the resort, the pool, whatever they like, or enjoy uh, nearby attractions. So the remainder of that day, mid afternoon onward is free to relax and just uh, kind of relish the property, which is quite lovely. Uh, on day six from the Lake Powell Resort, we'll set out on a guided tour of the spectacular Antelope Canyon. We actually added this um, aspect to the itinerary about, I would say about five years ago when a partner and a good friend of mine who's been in the business much longer than, than myself, uh, decades and decades longer than me, he said, uh, Vanessa, it is life-changing. You have to visit Antelope Canyon. And so I took his word because he's right about everything. And we've added it to the itinerary and it really is otherworldly. So you can see some photos there, have your camera ready for those formations of red rock. It's really something to behold. Um, you'll also see 6,000 year old petroglyphs um, also on this part of the itinerary, which is for many people quite a thrill. So we embark on our Bryce Canyon guided sightseeing, including spending a little time on the park's scenic drive, 
following the rim south to Rainbow Point. And there's numerous stops along this drive in Bryce Canyon where you're going to be able to get off the motor coach and gaze into the canyon to view those formations there. Um, there's also numerous trailheads along the way, including Rim Trail, which is very famous, that provide access down into the amphitheaters. And so there will be lots of exploration uh, with your guide of Bryce Canyon and the amphitheaters, some various hiking along the way. Uh, that is, uh, that's the morning of day seven. And we actually also on day seven, we begin our exploration of Zion as well. Options for the afternoon are plentiful. You'll, um, you'll be able to choose if you'd like to admit, perhaps hike to the Emerald Pools or stroll along the Riverwalk. Um, there's also an opportunity to join a ranger uh, for a talk at the Zion Human History Museum. So there's a wide range of activities that really we can tailor to your liking. If you want to be more active, you certainly can be. And if you'd like to, you know, relax and enjoy certain aspects of the park or the property, we also, we welcome you to do that. Uh, that evening, we stay at the Spring Hill Suites in Springdale. The setting is inspirational and I do have a picture that I'm gonna show you in a minute. Uh, and I think you'll probably agree. Um, and finally, on day eight, your uh, final full day of the program, uh, after a morning hike in Zion, we always have a, a, a slower hike and a more rigorous hike. So you can choose which one you join, but on your final full day after a morning hike in Zion, we'll travel to Las Vegas and you have free time to stroll the strip or just relax at the hotel. That evening, we'll all bid each other farewell at a final reception um, at the West End where we stay there. So here I just wanted to include, oops, I just wanted to include some of our, uh, also some of our inclusions. We don't like to nickel and dime people. So there are a few uh, lunches that are on your own and an occasional dinner, but we do include all porterage. We include all gratuities uh, for your wait staff, for your coach driver, for your tour director etc. That's all included. We include airport transfers for any guests to arrive and depart within our suggested windows of time. And they're quite large windows of time. We're not just talking like an hour. We're talking many, many hours of time. And most flights arrive within those. So um, there's quite a, quite a bit included in the cost of the program. And then moving right along to the accommodations. I, because we do highlight the iconic lodges and properties that we visit. I wanted to include just a few photos of some of the properties. Um, I've spoken about them along the way, so I'll just click through them. But at least I thought you should see some of the really lovely places that you'll be staying. Uh, in that top, that Goldings, that's the site of the Western movies that I had mentioned. Lake Powell, the view uh, is really second to none. I, I uh, that is not, doesn't do the view um, any justice at all. And then you can see on some of these, the lodge at Bryce Canyon and Spring, uh, Spring Hill Suite Springdale, they're just absolutely lovely, um, beautiful vistas. Finally, I, I don't remember if I mentioned, we are staying at uh, the West End in Vegas, which uh, is not in the heart of the strip, but just a little, uh, a little um, further outside. It's still quite accessible and you can walk places, quite a few places actually, but we didn't want quite as much hustle and bustle for our guests. So it's a lovely property, beautiful pool, great spa, uh, lots of services to enjoy and still certainly walkable um, to all of the uh, sites and, and casinos. And that's a photo of some Dickinson travelers uh, abroad. And any questions that you might have for me about the program, about the lodging, anything that you have, I'm glad to try and tackle now. So William yeah. has his hand up. Yeah. 
William, go ahead. Cool. Unmute yourself. There we go. I'm looking here at the very nice Orbridge brochure and the itinerary is not the same. I mean, it's, it's just different. And it would appear, if I have followed you correctly, that for whatever reason, you've cut the time at the Grand Canyon in half, because this is showing two nights at the Maswick Lodge. Um, and I think from what I could tell of your presentation, there's only one night. And for example, this has us going to the brochure, Lake Powell on day five, and you got us in your presentation going to Lake Powell on day four. William, do you have the 2022 version or was that one from 2020? No, no, this is uh, 2022. So you are, sorry, I'm just looking, I'm looking at a technical itinerary, which gives me sort of moment by moment. Um, and it looks as if, if you wouldn't mind hanging with me, I can, uh, and I'm also glad to give you sort of a play by play as well. Uh, it but does. Are you look, still sharing your screen too? Oops, sorry. Let me stop sharing. There we go. Oh, thanks so much. Um, thank you. And it looks like you will depart. It looks like we will be at the canyon. We will be at the Grand Canyon for both sunrise and sunset. So that's two nights at Mosswick at the canyon. Uh, and it looks like one night at Lake Powell Resort. And so what happens, I'll be very transparent no with night you. At Golding's Lodge, is that where you've made the change? No, there is definitely, hang on, there is an evening at Goldings. Um, what happens, I'll just tell you with the parks programs, the, uh, the parks lodges, they're under one, the National Parks owns all of the lodges. And so they uh, basically, it's, um, uh, it's, it's sometimes a, a bit of, um, it requires a bit of flexibility from us in order to um, get the space at the lodges that we want um, for, and, and ideally having you at the Grand Canyon is both for sunrise and sunset. That would be our ideal. We can't always do that. In your case, it's great that that's been a possibility, but definitely it is, um, it is uh, can be tricky with the lodges to secure that because they're ever changing. So that's probably why um, there was a bit of flexibility on that, but you are correct. We are at the Grand Canyon for two nights. You are right. And then where are we spending day four? Let me tell you. I show Grand Canyon and Monument Valley. Overnight Golding's Lodge. And overnight at Golding's Lodge. Yeah. Vanessa probably has a bunch of these trips. She's just getting right at <laughs> her up here. I do, I do have quite a few departures, but I, I'm sorry, I just wanna make sure that I'm telling you exactly the most up-to-date, you know, if you, uh, and your, your brochure is absolutely correct, um, that we are at, yes, you are exactly correct. That is correct, Laura. Okay, because my brochure, and I think Laura's too, doesn't have anything about a night at the Spring Hill Suites. No, you're staying at the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Now it has us in Zion Park Lodge, Vanessa, in staying in Zion, not Spring Hill, Springdale. Mm. Uh, 
I apologize. That's our departure, we were able to get in the park. It didn't have to stay yeah. outside. That is, um, that is definitely an advantage. That that is a huge advantage. Mm, um, that'll be nice. That is a huge Good advantage. Park. That is often not able to be executed. To be honest with you, it's really, really difficult to be within Zion because it's so rare. Um, so, okay. Uh, so I'm, uh, you are in, you are at the Canyon for the, you are at the Canyon for the sunrise and sunset at Maswick. Oh, on day four, you, you do visit Goldings for the evening. After you leave Monument Valley, you'll have all of your touring. You'll have the Navajo cookout, the storytelling, you will stay at Goldings. You then continue on to Lake Powell, as I mentioned. On day five, right? That's correct. That, that is correct. Uh, yes. And then you uh, also continue on to, after you leave Lake Powell, we head to Bryce, where uh, you'll stay at the lodge at Bryce Canyon. And finally, you are correct. The, the Spring Hill, it looks like the Spring Hill on a few of our departures is actually where they will stay. But on your particular departure, we have secured space at Zion Park Lodge, which is within Zion. So the Spring Hill is just at the gates. Uh, and it is exquisitely lovely. Um, Zion Park Lodge is within the park. So that is definitely an advantage for your group. That's, That's great. Nice. We actually have, it. yeah, we have four nights staying in the parks, which is really, really wonderful. It is definitely an advantage. Mm -hmm. um, and I apologize for that. I have several of my departures that are at the Spring Hill. So I, I'm sorry. I was incorrect. I, I, you guys are a rarity and that's terrific. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Vanessa, we have a question asking if you can talk a little bit about the pre-trip on the Rocky Mountaineer. I sure can. I would be glad to. Uh, so um, the Rocky Mountaineer is, it's a terrific um, train. Uh, I can say that they, the level of service is exceptionally good on the Rocky Mountaineer. It feels quite like traveling in um, perhaps like first class air travel. Uh, there's a domed viewing car on the Rocky Mountaineer. There's, um, you know, a dining car as well. It's a very, a very luxurious way to travel. So on the Mountaineer, you'll travel between Denver to Moab and, uh, you know, not only from the train, but you'll also be able to be off the train and really do some touring in, uh, in the parks. So uh, each night you don't, it's not a sleeper train. You may know this, but I, I should probably just say it because in many cases we do offer trains that are sleeper trains. This is not one of those. So each night you do disembark the train and you're staying in properties within the parks. One in particular is really special, at least I think it's really special. It's uh, Glenwood Springs and it's a terrific property right there. Also included in the pre-tour is admission to Arches uh, in Canyonlands, uh, as well as um, you know all of, the, uh, all of the same things that I had mentioned as inclusions on our other programs like gratuities to the guides, to the drivers, to the porters, all of those types of things as well. And then we also fly from Grand Junction where the pre-tour concludes to Phoenix. And that is also included in the cost of the pre-tour. Does that help? Um, the, the level of service on the train also includes uh, really delicious food. All of the, all of the uh, alcoholic beverages are included. Um, so some, so a uh, really nice high level of service. Does that help? Any specific questions about the Mountaineer? 
I do have a question about the main trip. Um, please repeat the information about the current size of the group and open seats available with the maximum number likely. I would say the maximum, again, I can't give an exact uh, because this will depend on availability in the properties. But as of right now, ideally, that number would be no more than 30. Uh, 30 people, although I do think we'll end up a little smaller. And currently we have, I believe we have three or four double rooms available. Uh, and I have not looked today. Admittedly, I've not looked at that number today. So if we got something over the weekend, I may not be um, aware of that. So few, but still available. And um, Vanessa, you had mentioned to me that um, wh whatever the size is, we would have a larger bus so that there is some spread out room as much as, as we can accommodate. Yes. Um, yes. But really the what limiting number is the hotel spaces, right? It's true. That's right. Because they're so sought after the properties, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes are years, you know, we're reserving mm -hmm. them. Uh, we're trying to contract years in advance. They're difficult, very difficult to secure space at. Um, so yes, it's the properties really, if we can add any rooms. And I have a question if there are any luggage restrictions. There are not. Okay. There are not luggage restrictions. We do ask that guests keep it to one or two pieces per person, but no size limit on those. So pack up your dancing shoes. <laughs> yes, I mean, Susan, whatever you want to bring. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, is there anything you'd like to add about what you're most excited about? Some things we'll be talking about and learning about on our trip? Sure. Well, the last time I was at the Grand Canyon, we had a wonderful ranger who I thought was going to take us on a geological tour. And in fact, what he did was really a cultural history of Native Americans who had lived in the Grand Canyon region. Um, so it was a really interesting social history. Um, and that's my area. I'm a sociologist. I'm very interested in Native American groups and the diversity among those groups across the country, and then also specifically the boarding school movement. Um, so colleagues and I have written a book on um, the Carlisle Indian School, Indigenous Histories, Memories, and Reclamations. And I will share a couple of articles from, from that book uh, to you. And then also recommend some others. For instance, um, Braiding Sweetgrass. I don't know if any of you have read that yet, but really interesting uh, nonfiction memoir. Uh, of a woman who is both indigenous and then also um, a scientist, an economist, um, botanist, ecologist, and botanist. So we'll be using that also as the community book discussion group for all Dickinson students uh, this coming January. So you also have a sense of what some of those students are reading. Um, and then there'll be a number of other suggestions. We'll look at some of the uh, right, readings on crimes against nature and con uh, conservation and the treatment of Native Americans. And I'll make some suggestions, which again, you might wanna follow up on or not, but Ortiz uh, Dunbar has written a very excellent book on the indigenous people's history of America. So we'll be putting together some readings, um, some suggestions, and then also really interesting because some of you may actually have quite a bit of expertise as well uh, in terms of what you would suggest in terms of reading. So I think we can end up coming up with a collective um, a collective bibliography, if you will. So I'm particularly interested in Navajo. We've had a number of Navajo students here at Dickinson. Um, and in fact, we've had service trips that have gone out to Res Refuge. Alice Frum, who is an alum, who had started Res Refuge in uh, Winter Rock, St. Michael's. And so we've had a lot of collaboration with them and also the Institute for American Indian Arts. So I'm just really excited um, and thank Laura for actually inviting me to lead this. And at first I said, but I'm not a geologist. <laughs> um, so I think my value added, which hopefully is value added, will really be on uh, indigenous peoples in the US. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. For me, this is like a dream trip. Yay. So Susan's going obviously, and I get to staff this trip. So I am very excited. Um, and I do want to mention a few things um, that even if you 
feel like you're not like a group travel person, you know, we will be, you know, such a small group, we won't just be a huge busload of people following along that, you know, we have Susan there for the educational component, we have the local guides that will be helping us. They will be one of the benefits of, of traveling like this is, you know, as things change from state to state and moment to moment and during COVID, they, you know, the, our local guides will handle those things. We don't have to figure it out on our own. Um, that's just such a nice peace of mind that we can travel um, without all those extra worries and wondering, okay, as we go from state to state, what, you know, what do we do now? Um, so that's nice not having to deal with those issues. We have the common bond of Dickinson. I've, I've led a couple of trips and even though we don't know each other and you know, some of you may have not crossed paths at, on campus, um, you know, just that common bond of Dickinson and people, you know, we remain friends afterwards. I just last week had lunch with two people who I went to Malaga with in 2018 and we still keep in contact. Um, so it's such a nice, a nice bond and getting to know people in that way. Um, so I'm excited and I hope others are excited. Um, and I'll, and maybe if people have thought of questions in the meantime, while we've been chatting, is there anybody? Anybody else that has questions? I'll keep chatting a little bit. Oh, Susan, Susan does. Go ahead. Uh, how can I sign up for the brochure? And I assume that will include costs. Correct. Correct. I did put in the chat the link to our um, alumni global adventures. So when you click that link I put in the chat, it's just dickinson.edu slash alumni travel. Or okay. You'll see the next three trips coming. You click that brochure and it has the, the, full, the full brochure, the itinerary, the hotels, the pricing, all of those things. Thank you. Yep. As people have um, specific questions about this trip, um, you can reach out to Orbridge and um, I'll put this number in the chat as well, and it's in the brochure, but it's 866-639-0079. And that's for questions about this trip. If you have questions in general about Dickinson's trips or have suggestions for future trips or anything like that, um, you can reach out to me at um, willsl at dickinson.edu. And um, I'm trying to do two things at once here, um, but I, I run the programs for for all the alumni trips so I can answer questions about alumni travel in general. Anybody else? Well, seeing that if you think of some after after the fact, you can email me at willsl at Dickinson.edu. Um, I'm happy to answer those or get, get the answers from Orbridge if it's something that I cannot answer. Um, as Vanessa said, we have just a couple of rooms left and um, we have a wide variety of folks of, of class years going on the trip. So it should be a nice, a nice group. And also I will follow up later, but if you do have suggestions for readings, feel free. I am just Rose. I've been here long enough, but it's just my last name, R-O-S-E at dickinson.edu. Oh, and Vanessa put in an email for Orbridge as well. If you have questions for Orbridge that way. Well, if anyone has any extra questions, feel free to hang on for a moment or two, um, or just reach out to me and I will answer them or, or get answers for you. And if you're interested, I encourage you to sign up sooner rather than later. And um, if you have friends, if you are interested in going and have friends that want to go, you don't have to be a Dickinsonian. It could be a friend or family of yours if you'd like to um, have somebody travel with you. So although you will see Dickinson rate listed, um, if someone's traveling with you, someone else, you know, non-Dickinson, non-Dickinsonian, we'll let them, we'll let them along with us. <laughs> <laughs> We're inclusive. That's right. <laughs> well, um, Again, I don't see any more questions. So Vanessa and Susan, thank you so much. 
to those who are joining us. Um, thank you for joining us. I hope you are interested and are considering the trip. If not, I hope you just had fun looking at pretty pictures of the Southwest. Um, and But thanks for joining us. And I hope to see you either on the trip or at a virtual event or an in-person event soon. So thanks and have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.